Hey guys, it's Taku. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well. Here we are at Summer Film Spotlight number eight. I can't believe we've made it the past two months. That's crazy. And today we are talking about Modest Heroes, which is the Studio Ponak film or series of films, and it was released by G Kids here in the US. Just as I was saying, Modest Heroes is a set of three films which comprise one overall episode of um, sort of feature films. So if you're buying this, you're going to get three films for the price of one, which, hey, that's always a deal in my book. The project was helmed by producer Yoshiaki Nishimura and features three different directors and I will talk about each of them. Well, we'll start with the first one. Although I guess I should mention real quick that each of these films is kind of strung together with uh, like a little intermission film type thing. If you watch it, it makes more sense than what I'm describing, but there is like a one minute transition between each film or it's like a minute and a half, maybe even 30 seconds. I don't know, but it basically just shows their film reel kind of starting up again again to preview the next movie. The first of these three films was Kanini and Kanino, which was directed by Hiromasa Yonabayashi. In this 15 minute uh, fantasy adventure film, you are following two kind of crab kids as they are basically navigating through life under the water. It definitely leans more on the fantasy side of things. Uh, watching this, they're like little people. So it reminds me of kind of an extension of The Secret World of Arietti, which was another Studio Ghibli work or The Littles, only a bit more tribal and more sad and lonely. The film revolves around the themes of family and survival, and I actually really enjoyed this one. This one is going to be the one that's most like a Studio Ghibli work. So if the kind of fantasy magical element of Studio Ghibli worlds is kind of like what pulls you in, then I think you'll probably like this one the most of the three. It's got a pretty sad star and a harrowing middle, but the end is nice and happy, and I like how everything ties up in a little bow. It's not the most mind-bending story whatsoever. Ever. It is just a basic tale about survival, but again, I'm here trying to appreciate it from more of the like artistic elements because the story's fine. The characters are fine. In fact, the most interesting thing probably about this would be that there's like little to no dialogue. The characters will say each other's names to each other and they'll gesture with actions like this, but they won't really, there's just no dialogue. And it's a really interesting how they'll communicate kind of their fears and anxieties about swimming away from you know, a big terrifying fish or escaping, you know, for their life. And of course, you also have the setting, which again, these kids, or I guess this family of people can swim underwater as well as go on land. So I think the animation spectacle here is going to be seeing how all of the watercolor kind of under the sea stuff blends with the above ground, also luscious, green, colorful, just prettiness. It's just a nice little film with really gorgeous art. The second film in this collection of short films from Ponak is Life Ain't Gonna Lose by Yoshiyuki Momose. This one's pretty straightforward and I think a lot of people will actually like this one the most. At least I enjoyed this one the most. But it is just set in Tokyo and it follows Shun who is a little boy with severe allergies towards eggs. You see how his mom from birth to like his elementary school years has gone out of her way to compensate in so many ways to find eating supplements, playing supplements, you know, being out in public because everything that's made with eggs can pretty much kill this kid. And I just really like these kinds of stories where you have a very strong nurturing mother character and a child who is undergoing kind of this coming of age story in a way. The animation spectacle on this one is going to be during some of the running, panicking, allergic reaction scenes. Uh, they're drawn with really kind of like nauseating visuals and colors and smears everywhere. And I really like the kind of the techniques that were done to portray his life or death situation. And yeah, again, the story is just going to resonate with a lot of people. I think we all know people in our lives who have severe allergies, whether it's towards eggs, milks, or other dairy, wheat, products like that. It also has a happy ending, although it kind of just ends. It really is just a very small chapter in this boy's life, but the relationship between him and his mom is a really good one. It's very sweet, and yeah, I think that 
this one is probably going to be my favorite or the one that I would like show people later down the line. The third and final short film is Invisible by Akihiko Yamashita. In this 14 minute action spectacle film, we are following an invisible man who basically doesn't interact with anyone in his life, goes to work every day, puts on his suit, attempts to shop, work, eat, live, just, you know, his normal life, but he's invisible and so no one sees him, people walk through him all the time. And it's actually pretty depressing little short film the more I think about it now. It is definitely the lonely struggle of this invisible man as he is trying to basically find a purpose in life. One interesting thing to note about him is that he's also weightless. So there is a scene in the movie where he's really tempted to just kind of give up and he carries like a fire extinguisher around him to kind of weigh him down to keep him grounded. And he throws it to the wayside and decides to kind of float away. Of course, he eventually realizes that it was a terrible mistake and grounds himself back in reality. But I think is, you know, just as a metaphor, it is interesting how we decide to ground ourselves in physical materials just to, you know, kind of make our way through life. I'm probably reading a little bit too much into it, but I think that of the three films here, this one's definitely the most artistic. It is the most creative and it's going to be the most like the furthest away from a Studio Ghibli movie. I really enjoyed watching Invisible just as well as I did the other two. I think again because it is really kind of sad and depressing and lonely that it just wasn't super up my alley but it is a really interesting movie that kind of puts you I don't know it just it lets you think for a little bit and if anything is good for these short films or just short films in general is you know just getting you to think and reflect on something very small small aspect of life. And of course this last film also has a happy ending none of these films are tragic by any means. So yeah, uh, Modest Heroes is going to be a bit of a mixed bag for a lot of people and that's totally fine because when you are buying these short films it's just as if you were buying a book anthology. You're going to get a lot of different short stories and a lot of different opinions, a lot of different characters from all different walks of life and different animation styles of course and really it's up to you to decide which ones you like and which ones you don't or which ones you would recommend to others and maybe which ones that you see once and you're kind of done after that. Overall, I would rate Modest Heroes a 7 out of 10. It's it's pretty all right. Again, I think if you picked it up, it's worth the money. And if not, I believe it is streaming on Netflix. Go check out this 2018 film. And while I am here plugging Studio Ponak, I did want to mention that we are in Olympic season. The Tokyo 2020 Olympics have officially taken off and Studio Ponak has pushed their creative short film, Tomorrow's Leaves, out into the world. It is a small uh, eight minute short, I believe, that features kind of these spirits of the elements getting together with the kids from all different tribes around the world. There's of course five to represent the five Olympic rings and it's about them coming together and bringing back late nature and life and all that stuff. It's it's cute. So yeah, I will leave that linked below if you are interested in watching that. It is on their YouTube channel. But guys, I'm going to leave it off here. I am an optimist when it comes to Studio Ponak, uh, which is probably very different from everyone else on them. I hope to see more uh, films like this. In fact, they actually labeled it as Modest Heroes like Theater Episode 1. So I hope that in the future we'll maybe get an Episode 2, which features some more animation talents directing creative works. But guys, let me know what you thought of Modest Heroes down in the comments. Thank you so much for for joining me on this Summer Film Spotlight, and till next time.